What's up, you guys? Let's go ahead and take a few deep breaths. We're going to get started here. I am jumping into this, going with the flow. I have my cards here. And I would like to start us off with some affirmations. But before that, I want to do a prayer. Lord Jesus, you are a shield around us, strong in love, heavy with power, shaped with hope, gilded with truth. We will fear no evil, for you watch over us, defend us, deliver us. And in this day, in this hour, in this very moment, we put our trust and our faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Inshallah. Amen. Thank you. Because everything that you do is miraculous. We are <sighs> calm and more at peace. Yesterday, I got this intuitive feeling that the world is moving way too fast. And while the world is moving way too fast, I got that intuitive message instantly as I was basking in the present and just letting the present, letting myself just be immersed. And I always think to myself, be still and know that I am God. That's been on my mind a lot, a lot, a lot. And in the last few videos that I had posted about narcissism, vampires, and all of these attacks left and right in every direction, right, that we are feeling as a collective. And I'm talking to the enlightened ones. I'm talking to our chosen ones. I'm talking to the ones who are, you know, spreading love and, and kindness, excuse me spreading love and kindness and you know putting yourself in a position where there is good and there is spirit so if you are that i am speaking to you welcome let's start us off with some affirmation a lot of what we have been feeling okay the attacks, the feelings of being trapped, feelings of not knowing which direction to take and being in the middle of people who continue to attack for no reason whatsoever. I am reminded to tell us, and as I just go with the flow today, you guys, I'm just listening in, okay, and, and feeling my, my, my intuitive senses here, <sighs> but I'm getting that while you are in this, in the middle of this attack or whatever it may be that you feel trapped in, a situation you may feel trapped in, okay, I'm getting like at work or even just at home. I'm reminded to tell you that you have a mission. And so while you are, you know, focusing in on your mission and focusing in on your assignment, we are leaving the distractions behind. We're we're ignoring it. We're not paying any attention to it. And and I am reminded to tell you to keep your focus on your assignment, to keep your focus on what you are doing for yourself, moving forward to better yourself. I release the need to know all the answers. Okay. You might feel a lot of this. I'm getting... Okay. The doubt that you may be feeling can very much come from the energies 
that you are surrounding yourself with, you know? Like, we can easily, if you are hypersensitive as well, we can easily pick up on other people's energies and then get mixed up with ours. And sometimes we don't, sometimes it's hard to differentiate if it is you or the other person. And so what I'm getting with this doubt is that you're you're doubting yourself for what you're doing. Excuse me. You're doubting yourself for the things, you're doubting yourself in the things that you're focusing on. And perhaps you're kind of having to, I'm getting like there's no balance I'm getting like an image of a person on a bike and they're kind of like leaning you know like leaning to the side a little bit like they're kind of losing their balance and I believe the reason being is because we have energies around us who aren't actually supporting what we are focusing on so that is um causing you to have so much of this inner doubt okay can you guys see that very well and while this may be okay while you, you while you may be feeling a whole lot of this doubt about yourself know that <clears throat> it is not you it is the energies around you that is causing you to doubt yourself and to have more fear in yourself and where you are going. But I suppose that when we put our trust in spirits and we put our trust in, you know, what we're feeling in our intuition and we put our focus on that, that doubt will instantly disappear. That doubt and that fear in self will instantly disappear. Right? And so come back in and affirm to yourself, I am capable, I am strong, I am lovable, I am worthy, I am enough, I am beautiful. This morning I woke up and I was reminded by spirit to affirm to myself and today, my, today's affirmation for myself is I am beautiful. And as I am receiving this message, I keep... I, I told myself, like, wow, I don't actually tell myself that enough. And so when we come back in and we affirm to ourselves, you know, this is where self-awareness, self-awareness comes in, right? When something in our body that feels uneasy, when our mind feel like it's not on the right track, when it, when there is no sense of balance, it only really means that either we have given too much of our energy to somebody who is draining us or we have been um we haven't been giving ourselves enough to go back in and and affirm to ourselves right here's another affirmation i am thankful for this life and the opportunities that it presents so much to be grateful for at this time okay we may think that there is none to be grateful for. We may think that what we have is little because of the things that were done to us. Um, you know, causing us to fall, fall, causing us to be behind, if you will. But there, if we were to just open our eyes and, and look and, and just be aware that there is a lot to be grateful for. A lot, a lot, a lot to be grateful for. Sometimes we don't think that there is, but there is a lot. You know, even when you're just sitting and you're being still and you're giving yourself some time to just breathe. I seen this post. If you guys know Hood Healer on Instagram, Imani. She had posted. If you... If you are breathing, you still have options. I see a butterfly outside. If you are breathing, if you are still breathing, if you still have breath, and you're still able to take in breath, take in air, right? You, there is still options. There is still, you still have options. 
And that's what I mean by you just being still. There's a lot to be grateful for. There's a lot to be aware of. That butterfly is just like playing with me. A lot to be grateful for. I'm going to pull up another one for us. I feel good when I can help others. <sighs> Going back to what I was saying about, you know, when we've been around too many people who drain us. Wow, I really suck at this. I'm going to try this again. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> Ooh, the color green is very significant, significant, you guys. And I, I colored my, painted my nails green and I love it. It's called tan lime. Tan lime! Um, what was I? <laughs> Damn, I lost my train of thought. I do this all the time. Man, ADHD ass. Oh, Lord, help us, <laughs> help us. Solace, 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 solace. The freedom, we're still, we're still on freedom. There's a lot of that feeling right now. Ooh, and having to have our freedom, it's like, you ever have, you ever just like, like, let's say you go out for the first time and you've been in the house for way too long, right? Like, if you're an introvert and if you've been in the house for way too damn long and you go outside for the first time in a long time, you're just like, wow, I never knew life could be so great. I never knew life could be so great. I never knew that, you know, I can feel like this. You know, this is, this is how the ones that have been victimized by narcissists, this is how you feel. This is how we feel. You know, it is like, a, like, it's kind of like that, you know, coming out, out, out of your cave for the first time and you're seeing the world for the first time and you're just like, I never knew that, you know, I look like this or I can feel like this. I never knew that the world is like this. You know, I've been trapped for way too long. I have been locked up. That's what it feels like because of one person. Because of one person, because of, you know, it could be like a spouse or unfortunately, it could be um, a parent, right? It could be a friend or not, not so friendly, but it could be, it could be anybody. And you didn't know that you were being trapped this whole time. And then so you come out of your cave for the first time and who knows how long and you're just like, oh, I can breathe again. And then that's when you have options. That's when you go, so many ideas are coming to me. Now options are coming to me, but it's coming, you know, to the surface now. And now I feel like I can do anything. When we are in a very nasty, and I suppose it depends on the severity of the situation, the severity of the narcissism, right? We don't actually know that we're being trapped until we are out of it. We're out of the situation and we're, we're away from that person. We don't actually know that we're being trapped until we are away from that person. And... You start to heal, right? You start to question yourself and then you start to to come back in order. You go back in and you start to feel like you're coming back in order. And then that's when you realize like, wow, I didn't actually know how long I have been in this weird entrapment that I have been in. And it's only because we've been giving too much. 
it's only because we've been really focusing in on just being loving and caring and giving to this person, you know. For a lot of us who have been victimized by a narcissist, that is what what we do is we focus only on on our part. And more than likely, what you have been doing is giving and listening and doing your best to meet them in the middle, right? Doing your best to keep yourself, to keep your composure around this narcissist. What we really focus on is what can I do for you so that you don't treat me as such, right? Because you're just trying to keep your peace. It's not like you're over here trying to battle or one-up anybody or, or be in competition. I suppose a narcissist is one to jump into conclusions, right? And assume that you are always in competition. Why is that? Well, how does one... How does one even develop narcissistic traits, right? That's a question to ask. How does one even develop narcissistic traits? And why do they always feel like we're always trying to compete with them? Why do they always feel like we are always one to um, attack them when they are the one doing the attacking, right? It's so weird. Like, they, they switch up on you like that. They switch up on you. Like, I know a narcissist in my life. This is the person that raised me. And she has her days when she's, like, super nice. Well, I shouldn't say super nice. She's just, like, you know, calm. And she looks calm. Like, she just looks like I'm just having a day, right? And you're not thinking anything of it. She's just doing her thing and I'm just doing my thing. And then all of a sudden, I just be doing something. She looks at me. Anything that I do, like for instance, if I'm reading a book, I can't even read a book in front of her. I can't, e I can't even do the things that I love doing in front of her. And I believe that narcissists hate Narcissists hate it when people are too focused on the things that they love to do because narcissists don't actually do that. I believe narcissists likes to go around and it's like being in surveillance, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how it feels like. Like they go around and they look at people and they're going, who do I victimize today? Who can I steal from today? Who can I take from today? And they and they hate it when they hate it when when people are doing the things that they love because it's reflecting back to them what they don't have. Does that make sense? So if you're just like sitting around and doing what you're doing what you love, minding your own business, and then all of a sudden they just their mind switches. You ever had anybody, you never had, you ever had anybody switch on you? So switch on you like that. And then, and then that's when you're just like, whoa, that's where, that's where you feel unsafe, right? That's where you feel completely unsafe. Like I can't even do anything around this person without this person saying anything to me. It's like a feeling of like bullying, right? They just keep bullying you. It's so crazy. And so then you got to find ways to, sometimes you got to find ways to compromise, you know? And it's so sad and very unfortunate to think like family members can do this. Like fam it's mostly family members that do this to you, you know? Like your own goddamn blood. Like I'd be having like family members like, Telling me, like, we're family. We're family. But they don't even, they don't even act like they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, you think that's family? I, that's weird. That's so weird to me. That is so weird to me. 
because I know I know what a family feels like. Sometimes I feel like my friends are are my family more than my own real blood, you know. And that's what sucks so bad. It sucks so bad because you're over here thinking like, man, I love them all, but they don't love you. If anything, they're trying to destroy you. And that's the part where you're just kind of like investigating. That's where you start to investigate, investigate, investigate. Let's find out the root of the problem here. What's the problem here? Narcissism. Oh, okay. Narcissism has been around for decades. I believe narcissism has been the number one virus that is killing us all and if we don't take heed on our self-care on our self-love i believe that's how we develop narcissistic traits right if we don't again if we don't affirm to ourselves, i am i am loving i am capable i'm worthy i am enough i am beautiful you know when we don't say those things to ourself and we don't talk nice and kind to ourself more than likely we're going to end up poisoning our own mind our own mind can be our best friend or our enemy and when comes when come face to face with your own mind it is exactly projected out to the universe right and then you attracting the same kind of energy back i don't even know if i'm making sense i'm just kind of like expressing and, and going with the flow here but this is how I see it in my mind and this is how I also have been seeing it for years because I have been dealing with one since I was eight years old and I'm almost 33. And the feeling, you know, and I suppose that this is what also really um, pushed me to do the work that I do today and inshallah, thank you God for, you know, believing in me and... Um, pushing me to do the work and to also share this with the world because it is needed. We need more of us to express our pain that we have endured that shouldn't have happened, that could have been prevented, but it didn't. And uh, and we were con and they had continued to attack us for no reason whatsoever, and this is what led me to do the work that I do today, and this is what also led me to create this channel. It's so crazy because I started this channel two years ago. I started posting a lot two years ago in Taurus season, and let me tell you guys the difference in my body. It's amazing how much our body can correct itself when we are doing the necessary inner work. It is amazing what a body can do and how it, it can correct itself when we are um, giving ourselves a chance to just rest and, and be in full rest and, and know that that is the option that you can have, right? And know that that is something that you can choose to do. And so while this whole, I want to say like this whole war that I've, I've, I've been in, this war, because it feels like it, you know, it's my own goddamn family. It's my own goddamn blood. And I've always been the one to like investigate and get to the root of every problem. I'm a Virgo. I like to, to get to the root of every problem and fix it. And I... And like Einstein, like trying to fix every little detail, every, you know, putting it like a puzzle. And only because who, wa who, who wants war? Who, who, who wants to, be, to always be in competition? How exhausting is that? It just reminds me of like people who 
are so entertained by drama and and they never change that you know drama is the very thing in their life that keeps them alive and entertained and entertain and it's just so weird to me um but this war that i've been in with this person who raised me is like it it had really opened me up to doing the work that I do today. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that. Because it's also giving me a chance to share my story and to be of service. That is my mission. And ha it has become my mission and continue on to be my mission and how grateful I am to be in this position to be talking to you guys and sharing this with you guys because this has been in my heart. This has been in my system for years that I couldn't speak about to anybody that I felt like I couldn't speak about to anybody because every time I would speak about it to somebody, they would just look at me crazy. You know, somehow, some way, someone's going to make you feel like you're the bad guy. <laughs> Everyone's going to make you feel like the bad guy. Can't You can't really expect the truth from others, but you can definitely expect the truth from yourself. So it's something that you got to fight for. Excuse me, confirmation burp. It's something that you have to fight for. If you're not speaking about it and expressing it, you know, it's, it's gonna it's just gonna be bottled in and it's just gonna stay in your system for forever and we need to speak our truth we need to stand in our truth we need to express our truth because if we don't express our truth it's not going to the opportunities and our our potentiality, you know, we're never going to get to a point where we can see our own potentiality. We're never going to get to a point where we can see um, our own freedom. If we don't allow ourselves to release all of these things, you know, it's, it's, it's still a theme here. Freedom. Okay, you know what? I'm done with you. We're never going to get to a point where we can have a lot of this. And, and, and having to release and having to speak about it and express about it, you know, especially if you have an ADHD mind. That's a lot for someone to, to handle. That's a lot for someone to carry in their system, you know. It very much shuts down your nervous system it, it shuts down your whole system your whole body and then you just come into a point of being in freeze mode i was in freeze mode for since like from middle school i want to say like middle school all the way up to like high school even after high school maybe like in my early 20s maybe even like mid 20s i was in freeze mode and i I hadn't actually real realized what a, you know, I just found out what a freeze mode is. You know, it's when your nervous system is just like in freeze mode. Like it's just stuck. It doesn't know what to do. It's you've become dissociated from, you, you have become dissociated from your own emotions and dissociated by, from the rest of the world because you are still trying to understand what's in here, but you haven't yet really understood what's in here, you know, because either we're not around people who are encouraging you or, you know, your child left behind. It, it, we don't actually realize it until we tap in and we give ourselves the compassion. We, and, and, and give ourselves the chance to be soft. We don't actually realize that we have been in freeze mode and our nervous system has been in freeze mode until we tap in and we go in and we give ourselves the kindness and the compassion to ourself 
After all these years, you have been attacked by a narcissist. Whomever it is, a vampire, whatever you want to call them, label them, whatever. <laughs> people, you know, people that you thought you could trust, but you couldn't trust, you know. it. It's weird how they switch up on you like that. That part right there is where I'm just like, no. You start to realize that, right? Like you, you, your intuition tells you like, why did this person just switch up on me when yesterday they were just so freaking nice to me? And I do one thing that they don't like and then they switch up on you like that. It's weird, right? That's the devil's work, I think. That, that's when that's when we are in, in battle with our mind. That is when we are in battle and have... Our mind has become our own enemy. So you feel the need to become an enemy to everybody else. It is, in fact, in our own mind. The virus is in our own mind. It starts in our mind and then it spreads like a virus to the rest of the world, to the rest of us. Poison just spreading around, you know, because we're not paying attention to where our mind is at. And let me tell you why our mind is getting worse and worse. Our mind is deteriorating, deteriorating. Our mind is becoming even more... Um, so small unaware our mind is like <sighs> being manipulated every day without us even knowing that it's being manipulated every day there's like no sense of consciousness there's no sense of like awareness and i believe the reason being is because you know social media for instance i feel like that's like the number one killer of our own self-awareness it that's their purpose is to keep us away from no know, knowing our own mind and loving our own mind and getting to know our own mind social media is the number one killer to our own self-awareness our own um intellect to take our intellect away from us because nobody wants to see a millennial who's smart especially if you're like a fucking genius remember when i was talking about old people yesterday <laughs> i know i like i i've never wanted to like talk shit i've never wanted to like bash on anybody or you know say things i just speak the truth and people just hate the truth because they know they do it. And they just hate it because they got caught. You know, it's just like when evildoers do evil things and do wrong things and they know they have done something wrong and then they act like they didn't do it when somebody confronts them and tells them the truth, you know it shakes up their mind like how did you find that out like how do i not find that out that's so weird for you to say you know it's my mind is just like uh, it's the number one killer to our own self-awareness to to get to getting to know our own intellect social media is that the very thing that is killing our mind and slowly slowly you see there is only one you and and while you are in that body that you are in while you are in this beautiful body that you are in that that was given to you for you to um to water for you to nurture for you to nourish just like how we you know we are to our planets we are also a, a universe you know we are also a, a world here we, we have our own universe in here to tend to and we don't think about these things because we look too much on the outside we look too much on what's going on in the external world we, we, we look too much on what's going on with other people. 
right? This is what I'm getting. This is how I also see the world. You know, when you when you become super still and you're you're observing of the world and the people around you, you start to see the good and the bad. You know, you start to dif differentiate the good and the bad. Your your mind starts to come in order. You know, when you're still. Remember that you are a temple. You are a gallery, baby. Everything that you carry in your body has history. Your body carries history. You are a living you are you are art. It's the art of your life. We are to look at our life as art and, and so much, so much more than what money can buy. So, so much more than what we see, you know, I don't know if I'm sounding crazy here, but if you are one to believe in magic and the mundane. I have always been one to follow my intuition. My intuition has been my moral compass. My intuition has been the very thing that has been keeping me safe and alive. Goddamn alive. Don't know how I'm still breathing, to the, breathing today. You know what I mean? Don't know how I'm still able to, to keep myself together. I believe it is spirit i believe it is our ancestors that is speaking to us on the daily and giving us signs you know throwing us signs as much as they can they are trying to save us from this world because this world isn't very nice they are trying to save us to get through the difficulties the uncertainties you know the war and if we were just to, you know, listen in and be still, it, it starts by being still and then listening in to the voices within ourselves because the voices within ourselves is what is important and essential to our living, to our way of navigating in life, our moral compass. It isn't, you know, what is being taught out there. It is all inner self-knowledge i had mentioned in my other video my other video i believe not the last one but the second last i had mentioned that we are one we are the ones to provide for this world when we have when we have um another butterfly and it's white when we have had activated our system and fully activate like think of our body as a computer you know when we have recharged like think of our body as a as an iphone you know when we're fully charged we're we are able to use and be useful we're able to use ourselves and be useful right just like our phone when our when we are fully fully charged and fully activated mind body and spirits we see the world in a different lens. You start to respond to things in a different way. And you start to respond to people in a different way. It's not the same. That's not, that's not something that they tell us. And I hope that they do now. But that's not also something that they teach us in school. That's not what I was taught in school. But also, I was really never in school. I was the one to always leave school and ditch school because I just felt like all of the subjects did not interest me. I loved writing and I loved English. But I... There was too much going on in my mind for me to even concentrate on the things that were being taught in school. And I always felt like my mind was somewhere else. I always felt like my mind was wandering somewhere else. You know, I was always, I was always a creative. I was, I, I felt like I always had a very creative and innovative mind. 
I believe that's the ADHD in me. Um, but going back to what I was saying about we see we see it in a different lens. Like, we see the world in a different lens. You know, when we come back in and we, we become even more still. Remember, your body is a temple. When we become more still. You ever notice that when you give yourself a chance to sit and meditate, you feel recharged, fully activated again. After, like, for example, after a long day at work, right, you come back in and you just sit for at least, like, what, 10 minutes? And in, in, in just in, within that 10, 10 minutes, you feel back to yourself again, completely recharged, completely activated. How do we get ourselves to be in a super recharged? How do we how do we get ourselves back in super recharged? I just keep getting super. And remember like for us to be fully activated, it is the mind and the body and our spirit that needs nourishment. It's not just our physical body that needs nourishment. It, it is also our spirituality that needs to be activated and fully charged. It is also our mind that needs to be activated and be fully charged. So when we are focusing in on our mind, we are also recharging our mind and coming back to ourself. Social media only takes that away from you. It, it takes away your, your own self-awareness. It takes away your own spiritual discernment. Slowly, by and by, we don't even know this. You know, we don't even, we don't even realize how, how much it has affected us until we become so unconscious and so unaware. Until you are constantly responding and reacting to things when you don't have to. You don't have to answer questions all the time. You don't have to react to people and their questions all the time. These people just want to ask stupid ass questions so they can be nosy. You know how some people ask stupid ass questions just to be nosy? It is unconscious. Completely unaware. Some people just ask questions and they don't even know why they ask questions. Yo, there's so many animals. Like, what's going on? Yesterday, I seen there's a, there's a bee. There's a spider. Um, I seen, like, what, two butterflies right now? Yesterday, I seen a hummingbird. Ugh. I should have taken a picture, but it was, like, right when I looked up, I was giving myself a minute to just sit outside in the backyard and right when I looked up there was a hummingbird it was the most beautiful fucking thing in the world I cried inside because it was just so beautiful but <sighs> anyway what was I saying that is what social media does to your mind when we are not careful right Sure, social media, I don't want to take, you know, the fun out of it. I don't I don't know I don't only want to talk about the negative aspect of it, but it has become very negative and this is why I'm bringing it up, but I'm not also trying to take the fun out of Instagram because Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be, Facebook, you know, I I see social media platforms as a way to express yourself, you know, to be creative. And I have been using social media platforms to be creative and stay creative and to create authentic and genuine contents, right? Because this world needs authenticity. And suppose that spirit is bringing us back to that, you know, bringing us back to our own self so that we are able to tap in and give way to our people with new contents and having a fresh new perspective and that's what i love about it. that's what i love about social media is you know we're 
becoming more creative and tapping into our authenticity and sharing that with the world because it's what we need. But it's, it's more cultural. It's more of, um, this is what I have experienced when I scroll through Instagram. You know, there is funny, there, there is funny, there is humor, and there is also sadness, and there is also soul, you know? But it's, if we were to, I suppose, shift our mindset and only seeing the good in it, and not really having to believe in everything that you see on social media. Because I guarantee you not everything on social media is true. We want to believe that everything that we see is true. And I suppose this is what society wants us to think. Is that whatever we see on the external. Whatever we see on social media is always true. It is not always true. And this is where we have to go in and tap in. And use our spiritual discernment. And know and differentiate the good and the bad differentiate what is true and what is untrue what is genuine and what is not so genuine does that make sense we got to be discerning what you are on the inside is what you see on the outside right there is nothing to look for on the outside you should not be looking to anything on the external because you have everything already within yourself all you got to do is stay still Come back to this and a whole lot of it because we don't give ourselves enough to actually know what the fuck that is. Our society has become so small in mind. We're not thinking wide enough. We're not thinking big enough because, well, It's disappointing. <laughs> it's disappointing. I, I suppose it's a curse. You know, I feel like I see everything and I feel everything. You know, if you are a feeler and if you see, if you see and you feel and you hear, and you know what I'm talking about when I say that, it's draining, right? So, so, so you got to go back in. There is, in fact, nothing wrong with you know, wanting to be alone sometimes and giving yourself some time to breathe because the world gets too noisy and the world gets too crazy and a bit much sometimes, don't you think? And that's where they want us to be, is to be obnoxious so that, w so that we don't know our mind anymore, so that we don't know where we are with our heart anymore, so that we don't know where we are with our body anymore and all these chronic illnesses that we're having in our body that just does not belong there. There's not enough prayer. There's not enough meditation. That is all being taken away from us so that we don't grow <laughs> to be the person that we're supposed to be at our utmost self and living out our potentiality. Whomever it is in charge of this whole place, right, is pretty much taking us away from our own abilities and, and capabilities and potentiality. That's exactly what they don't want to see. I want to read to you guys if I can find it. The channeled message that I wrote yesterday. Ooh, that's another one too. Here it is. As I sit here, my intuition tells me the world is moving too fast. This is a channeled message that I got yesterday. We are all moving too fast. And as I sit here in this quiet home, in silence, basking in God's presence, the world is moving too fast as I sit here writing this. The world needs our help. We are in need of a lot of help. This world needs our hand. My intuition tells me we all need help. 
We all need to quiet down and be in full rest, be in a higher spirit, higher ground. And I had written that I took a nap and I woke up to it, writing it. I had it in my mind and I woke up to it and I started writing. When you feel and compelled to write whatever it is that's on your mind i suggest that you do anything that comes to mind write it writing helps and it helps you also understand your own mind and where you are with your own mind it helps me tremendously especially if you have an adhd mind when you're writing and it even take, you know, a little notebook with you and a pen with you and just put it in your purse or something. And if you, um, or you can even put it in your back pocket, you know, if anything comes to mind that you know you feel is important, write it down. It is so essential because you can go back to that and read that, right? And, and, and know where you are with your mind. It, they're hidden messages, I, I suppose. I believe there are hidden messages, right? Anything that comes to mind, those voices that you hear in your mind, you know, that's to take heed on. I'm just putting that out there. I just want to share that with you guys. Writing for me has helped me understand my own mind. It has helped me understand my own mind separated from everybody else's does that make sense because while i am one being looked at as a bad guy i know where i am with my mind does that make sense if anybody if anybody is out to attack you and anybody is trying to question you you know where you are with your mind it has helped me to be more discerning with myself and where I am with my mind because this world can very much corrupt you and corrupt your mind. You know, you may not understand that what other others are doing sometimes is to slowly corrupt your mind. You don't even know, you're not aware. But once you start writing the things and you go back to them, you start to understand that it wasn't you in the first place. You start to understand that it is the world. It is the world's problem. It is not my problem. You start to realize that you, you were not the bad guy in the first place. You start to realize that you weren't the one that created all of this chaos. You start to realize that it's not your crazy mind. It's just that you are gifted. You are a genius. You are one who has a big mind and you're allowed to have a big mind. I suppose that every single one, every single body, every single body in this on earth is carrying a gift and a very special gift, a very specific gift that spirit that God has given to you. And he is reminding us that that is still a choice for you to tap into. You know, you're, you're never actually running out of options. Um, remember what I had mentioned earlier about uh, what the hood healer said, Imani? She had posted that while you are still breathing, you still have options. If you are still breathing, if your eyes are still open and you're breathing and your body is still alive, you are, you still have options. More than likely, you still have options. I have kind of just like <sighs> went into this hoping to just let the flow take me there and if you have gotten this far 54 minutes and if you have gotten this far with me i appreciate you you're a real one i've been in rest um giving myself some time to rest giving myself some time to reassess and rethink about a lot of things that were done to me. You know, when you start to realize, man, the things that, the, the wrong that was done to you, when you start to realize the wrong that was done to you, you know, your, your body, um, 
your body needs that rest. Your body needs that full rest. Your body takes you back to having more rest. As you should, you deserve it. When you have finally figured out the wrong that was done to you, you know, you start to question a whole lot. And you're allowed to. You are allowed to. There are a lot of things that they, and when I say they, you know, what I mean when I say they, there are a lot of there are a lot of them who makes us think that we are not big enough in mind, that we are not able to use our own spiritual discernment, that we're not able to use our own intellect, but we are allowed and is valid. It is valid to use your own intellect. I think it would be wrong if you didn't use your own intellect. I think it would be fucking wrong if you didn't do if you didn't use your intellect. I think it would be so wrong if you didn't use your spiritual discernment. I believe that we came out of our mom's womb with it until this world corrupted us. You know what I mean? We start to realize, and I'm talking to the ones who have been in great trauma. I feel like sometimes I'm talking I'm talking mostly to our trauma survivors here, right? Because our mind has been in clutter. Our mind has been manipulated. Our mind has been conditioned and um, controlled. And so growing up, our mind was in constant clutter. Um, we didn't understand what it's like to, to get to know our own mind. We don't, we don't, we don't actually, we didn't really understand our own mind because it was being controlled until we gave that self, our self-awareness, like until we went in and, and said enough is enough, right? It's crazy how our body can correct itself. I know I said that already. <sighs> Just knowing where... I, ooh, I had written that too. I want to read to you guys. I had written that too. I feel a difference in my body. I feel so alive, awake, so clear. All I see is light. My body feels different. I see myself in my adult body. I don't see myself in my teenage body, although I still feel like I am 13 again, but I see myself in my adult body now. It's weird. It's like I am seeing myself as an adult for the first time in this body, grounded and even more. As I keep up with my prayers, my body feels different and I look different. I feel different. I had written that yesterday. And... What I mean by I'm seeing myself in my adult body for the first time, I believe that when we have had some time to heal our inner child, you know, you start to feel different. Like, yes, this is the same body that you were in when you were a teenager, but I'm now seeing myself in my adult body. It's weird to say that, but I'm hoping that I'm making sense because like when you have had one to, you know, heal your inner child and then you've gotten to a point where you, you are now meeting your inner child, like you have now, you have completely um, healed your inner child. And I don't really, I don't really think that we have, that we really completely heal our inner child. I think that's just like a lifetime of healing, you know, like a lifetime of like just sitting with yourself and getting to know yourself and understanding yourself because it's a never ending fucking thing. But when you have come to a point where you've understood your inner child and you have accepted your inner child, you know, it's like the, for the first time you're seeing your adult body and so fucking weird. It's a weird, I don't know, illusion, I guess. Is, I don't know. But thank you guys for hanging out with me. I didn't really use many cards here. I did shuffle a couple of tarot cards. I got the Six of Pentacles and the Ace of Swords. Um, I believe what I'm getting with this is that... And the Ace of Swords... It's just like, you know, being more in clarity and knowing who the fuck you are. 
Ace of Swords is telling me there is much, much to look forward to. The clarity that you're holding on to. Stay there. You know, have more. Allow yourself to have more clarity. Allow yourself to let clarity come in. Allow yourself to receive more clarity, if you will. The Six of Pentacles is telling me that that service, that gratitude, keeping yourself in that attitude. Thank you guys for being here. That was like a self-expression slash freebie slash reading. I'll let you guys decide. I love you guys so much. And thank you for always supporting me in this channel. I will see you in the next. Much love. Bye.